An exciting feature of the Ray Trace 3D Render is the ability to have the objects that you extrude inside that renderer reflect off other layers. And one extra aspect of that is something called environment layers. That's where you take a layer and in essence project it on the inside of a sphere and then have the extruded objects, the text and the shapes, reflect off that sphere. It's really a phenomenal feature. To see how it works, go to Working Files, After Effects Projects, and open up 2103 Reflection. We have two comps here. In the first one, we're going to work on the Reflections feature. And in the second one, we'll work on that environment map, that projection on a sphere that I told you about. Let's just start off with this Reflections comp here. I've set it up with this image, and then a light, and then the extruded text, and the extruded shape. And we're looking at it from the custom view, and there's a reason for that. This image here is going to cover up everything. The fact that we've lined it up like this, this image is sort of facing away from you. If you go back to the active camera view, all you're going to see is black. That's because it's in 3D space, but it's being illuminated from the other side. And I did that just so you can see how this works. So I'm going to go back to the custom view here. And we're going to let the reflection here reflect off of this. And then I'll show you how you can see the reflection without this thing getting in the way. It's a pretty cool feature. So the first order of business is to look at this thing that's providing the reflections. So let's go down to the flowers and open up its 3D characteristics by pressing AA. And you see it's got something different. When we've worked with a shape layer or a text layer, we didn't see this thing called curvature. When you're working with something that's not a text or shape layer that you've extruded, you have the option to curve it, which is something we haven't talked about, but I'll show you how that works. So that's a possibility here as you work with these flat layers inside this ray traced 3D space. There you go. I'll have that go back to its original zero by going Control or Command Z. There we go. So let's just skip that for now and move on down to material options. So I just want to show you one little feature here for this object, and that is appears in reflections. In other words, when we turn on reflections for these guys, then this thing will appear in those reflections, which is what we want. But there's this other feature here besides on or off, and that is only. You make it disappear, but you can still see the reflections showing up here. And that's how later we're going to be able to see through it, to be able to see the reflections from in front, from the active camera view. So let's go back to just on. There we go. And now we want to turn on the ability for these guys to reflect things. So let's just go up here a bit and open up the extrude and shape layer by clicking on both of them, controller shift clicking on both of them, and pressing A8 like that. And we're going to skip the geometry options here, but take a look at the material options. And it's something very simple down here. It just says reflection intensity. I'm going to lift that up to 100%, which is more than you typically would do. Hardly anything has a 100% reflectivity, but we're going to do it in this case just so you can see things a little bit better. And now I'm going to zoom in on those guys by just clicking away like that and doing Control or Command Plus a couple of times. Let's just take a look at them. Take the camera tool and look around a little bit and look at the reflections off the object in front of them. Obviously, we run into trouble here when we start bumping this black thing in front of us. Let's try something else here. Switch the camera to the Unify Camera tool and hold in the middle one and pull it up a little bit like that. And just take a look at this guy. We'll just rotate it around a little bit more so you get a better chance to see this, how it works off those guys. And we could also have those guys move around as well. Let's say click on one of them, click on the text, for example, and click on the W tool here and move it around. And as you move it around, you see how it reflects off the background there, it picks up the flowers and what have you. Is that cool or what? Very nice. Same thing with this guy. Rotate you around a little bit. That's great. Now these guys are pointing forward in essence. So if we want to see them looking at them straight on from the front, that's going to be a problem. We'll go back to the active camera view now and all these lovely reflections will go away because that image, that JPEG file covers everything up. Well, we can deal with that by shifting over to just reflection only for that thing on the bottom. So I'm going to go down here a little ways to the appears and reflections and just change that to only. And now, there they are. Let's zoom out a little bit. And now we just see the reflections on these guys and don't have to see the flowers in front of them. Very slick. Let me click on you. Let's get the shape layer moved around a little bit here. Click the rotation tool, W. You can see how we're reflecting off the flowers and other elements behind us there. Really cool. You can combine this with some transparency. It doesn't have to be 100% reflection. If you open up this guy, take a look at the material options again, AA, like that. But on here, the reflection intensity, reflection sharpness, you can knock that down a little bit. Roll off is kind of a subtle difference, but these things kind of make it a little less in your face in terms of reflection. But I think you can see how it works there. Let's switch over to the environment layer. What we have here is a fairly complex comp. 
the reason for that is I want to show you a number of extra features here that go along with the idea of working with an environment map. I've got text and shape layers that have been extruded, and I've got this background image and a light shining all three of these guys. What I want to do is I want to take this image in the back there and wrap it around, put it on a sphere, essentially project it on a sphere. It's very easy to do and very cool when that happens. Generally, when you work with an environment layer, you want the image to be fairly large. Here it's 3600 by 2409, which is almost twice as wide as this HD comp. So that works pretty well. Besides, it's just artwork, so we don't need to worry about it being too crisp or sharp. If it were involving things that were identifiable, you might want it to be even larger than this. To convert it into an environment layer is very easy. You can select the layer and go up here, go layer, environment layer, or just right click on it like that and go environment layer, just like that. Then it wraps itself all the way around. And you can tell it's an environment layer because it's got this little globe down here. And now let's see what kind of properties an environment layer has. Not very many. Rotation, essentially. And does it appear in reflections? Again, it could be on or off or only. Another cool thing. You don't have to have this guy on. You can have it be only, and then you won't see it, but you'll see the reflections on the objects inside it. So we'll go back to on for now. Let's just take a look around here. I'm going to go along the Y rotation. So that's the vertical rotation. Let's rotate around it here. Let's see what it looks like. We go around and around and around. And you're going to see one little issue when you work with an environment map, and that's the seam. Rarely are you going to have an image where the left side and the right side blend together seamlessly. You almost always have an abrupt seam like that. But there's really an easy way to fix that, and that's an effect, the Sycor effect. Let's go over here and type in Repe, R-E-P-E, -E, and you're going to get CC Repetile. And that has one little feature inside it that's going to solve this problem. Just drag that over to that particular file there, or that little layer. And let's look at Repetile. And the last thing at the bottom here says Blend Borders. Watch this. Now we're done, basically. Who could see that that is an edge? You can make it even more if you'd like. And now we wrap around here looking at the Y axis. Let's scroll on down here a little ways and wrap it on the Y, and we'll go right by there. And boy, if you could tell we went by that little seam, you're a better man than I. So that's a cool way to deal with seams that are kind of abrupt. So that's point number one. Another thing you can do is you can add a camera. So I've got a camera already set up here. I'm just going to add that to camera by turning it on. And we could have the camera rotate around the scene, so that way you're not just seeing the object in the background spinning around while the text stays in place. You will open up the camera, go to rotation for it, and you can rotate it as well. Let's just put this thing in the active camera view. There we go. And now we can rotate around like that. But since we're inside a sphere, this is one of those times when using a null object layer can really be helpful. So I'm going to take this camera, and I'm going to right-click on it and go Camera, Create Orbit Null. And that'll put a null right there in the center of things. You can see the null object layer is right on top of the center there, right where we put that shape there. That means that we can have the camera spinning around that shape, looking at the front, the back, the sides. Let's go back to the Active Camera View. And take that null object layer, click R for rotation for it. Now we can rotate around it. See the back side of the text. Wow, I just think this is amazing how cool this looks. Is that not cool? Finally, there's one more thing you can do in this space that may not immediately occur to folks, and that is you can have a drop shadow. Now, you can't apply an effect to this guy. You can't apply, let's say, a layer style to this guy, have a drop shadow fall there on the background. It won't work. But you can give it a fake drop shadow using a shadow catcher. We've used shadow catchers before when we talked about working with the 3D camera tracker. But here we're going to make one from scratch, or at least I'll show you how to make one from scratch. So let's go on down here to the white solid. Press AA for it. I'm going to take a look at its shadows. And accept shadows to on. And that'll show the solid. Right now there's no shadow on there because I've specially set up the lights to not throw a shadow. This light here that we're looking at is a point light that just kind of illuminates the scene, but it's not throwing any shadows. I want to have more control over the shadows. So I've got a spotlight here that I haven't turned on. I'm going to show you the spotlight. The spotlight has cast shadows and has a shadow darkness that's kind of low, a little bit of diffusion on it, but the intensity of the light is really low. You can have a low intensity light and still have it throw a shadow of high intensity. I'll turn it on and it'll throw a shadow down there on that shadow catcher. I'll go over to the custom view here. And you can see the little bit of a shadow going there. Let's go back to the light. We can increase the shadow darkness. And that's independent of the brightness of the light. I can make the light even dimmer and it won't change the darkness of the shadow. The shadow is independent of the brightness of the light. So the light is not really affecting things here very much, but the shadow is falling down here, down below it, on the shadow catcher. 
And then as far as the shadow catcher concerns, you know how that works. We go on down here, and instead of accepting shadows as on, we change it to only. And now you can have the shadow falling there. Now you see that it's maybe a little abrupt there, a little too much. And you can adjust that with the light again by having it be not so dark. Now let's bring it down to 20 something. Now it has a more subtle look. And as we take the null object layer here, press R for rotation, go back to the active camera view, and now rotate around the Y. See the shadow falling behind it, as you'd expect. Just to wait for things to re render here. There we go. Very nice. There we go. Let it re-render again. So it's probably taking this a little bit beyond what might be the sort of standard way to explain the environment layer. But you can see now, I think, that you can take any layer, project it onto a sphere. You can have the extruded texture shapes reflect off of that sphere. You can have the sphere disappear if you want to, just have the reflections appear on the text of the shapes. Then you can add a camera. And if you want to rotate around it, an orbit null will be helpful. And if you want to create a shadow catcher from scratch, be my guest. All the things you could do now because of the ray traced 3D renderer.